Hello, welcome to a presentation on our tangible object cards from Adaptivation. Um, this is going to be very informal and quick, so we'll try to get in as much information as we can. Just a little history on um, the tangible object cards. Um, Adaptivation has always been known for incorporating objects into communication. We are we know that there are kiddos and adults, for that matter, that need um, that more tangible representation. Um, and so with, through the years, it had come to our attention that people were putting together um, tangible symbol sets. Um, but the problem was consistency. They couldn't recreate them for the next year or for another child. Um, because they couldn't find the same objects. So we started toying with a commercial system and we looked at information that was out there, which was real limited. Um, but one thing that stood out is that you had to differentiate a tangible symbol from the actual object. And so in reading through the literature that was out there, we found that people suggested having a border, having a boundary. And we came up with this boundary. So this card is your boundary. And so then we had to look for objects that would attach to this card, leaving us room. We know we wanted a picture symbol as well. And so we wanted something that would leave room to associate that symbol with the object. And so once we decided on a size, we had to decide on um, vocabulary. What were we going to represent? Um, we've been doing this for well over 10 years. And at that time, there wasn't a lot out about core vocabulary, and so we looked at what people, people had done checklists on what would you want represented by an object and how would you represent it. And we sifted through that. We came up with um, basically 20 basic symbols that we wanted to represent. And also we put together some supplemental sets. So six supplemental sets made up of five cards that were more um, activity specific. Oh, we have some that are specific for school, specific for eating, specific for wellness. Um, and you can see a list of those on our website and in the catalog. Once we had vocabulary, then we wanted, we had to figure out the objects that we would use to represent those, um, that vocabulary. And we had to search, we had, we had to look at what could we get consistently what would fit on the card. So there were a lot of variables in that. And some of the objects that we have, we currently use representing our vocabulary wouldn't have necessarily been our first choice. But again, we had to look at all the variables that went into it. So for example, now this is our symbol for drink. This is the cup we use to drink. This is not a symbol. The, the cup attached to that boundary, to that card, is now the symbol. And people will ask, well, what would you do with those? You use this just like you do any other symbol. So you can put it together for communication. You can put it together in um, a visual schedule. You can put it together even in a work task. And I'll show you some of that as we go. Um, so again, we started out with those 20 basic set, the 20 basic set, and then the um, supplement, the six supplemental sets. Now, um, in the last couple of years, we've been approached about, oh, core vocabulary, which we fully endorse. And how would you represent that? Well, we found out in our basic set, we did have some of the core vocabulary. We had eat and drink and work and read. You can see some of those here. Um, but then we looked at, oh, what are the most common core vocabulary? And people suggested lists to us. And so we came up with um, 15 specific core vocabulary. And they were 
a lot of them were things that were really hard to represent. So we had to look at, we looked at, you know, our goal is always working toward the symbol. And so we looked at that symbol. How could we represent that symbol in more of a 3D format? So now we have three um, core word sets um, where the symbol is really geared, or the, the tangible symbol is really geared toward that 2D symbol as well. So I'll show you a couple of those. The other thing about all the symbols is they don't, even though we assigned a meaning to them, you don't have to. You can change that meaning. For example, we have this one, say TV, but I have seen people use it to represent the computer, the iPad, going to a movie. And so there's lots of things you can do to look at how that specifically is going to be used for the client you're working with. What do they need represented? Is there anything already put together that we could change? We have reference on our website to things that, um, stickers that can actually completely block out um, what's printed on here so you can print your own meaning. Um, this one, it's hard to see on here, but we've also added the braille on here. That's all things you can do to modify those. Um, we have resources on our website as far as lists of alternate meanings that people have used. Um, for example, this one, the money, sometimes people use for want or more, you know, those kinds of things. Um, so it's fun to look and see what you want to use to represent those concepts. No matter what you choose, um, it has to be taught. Again, through repetition, just like other symbols, these symbols have to be taught. So the meaning that the gears mean work, that the arrow means go, those aren't just intuitive things. And so we just, we just need to teach it through repetition, through using it in functional manners, using that vocabulary. Now I want to just get into a little bit about how people use it in a more functional way. Again, we talked about visual schedules. We talk about just for communication in general. We can do object picture match. You can use just the object. You don't have to. If you're not at that level where you're working toward that symbol yet, you can take that symbol completely off. You can add that symbol, so you can do object picture matching on there. We have ways to organize. This was is one of um, our Velcro units. I'm going to try to get this in here where you can actually make a board using these symbols. So, oh, I'm going to read. Whoops. I'm going to go read. I'm going to go to the computer. So again, we can put it together just like any other board. Um, we can add voice output, and there are multiple ways to add voice output. One of the simplest is this is a single message device, but it does have three levels. And so on this device, I can record my message and touch the picture. Help, please. Help, please, it said. Or I can change it to a different message. I have different levels. No help. I can do it myself. Again, you record, you change the meaning by what you record. Do you need help? Oh, there he's asking a question. Again, Do you need help? on this device, just touching this, Do you need help? touching the object Do you need help? will activate, or adding the picture will activate. So Do you need help? there's lots of ways you can use this as well. And a Alex is real easy to um, put on the table, hang it on the wall, so you can do multiple things that way. You can also simply add it to a pal pad, our large pal pad. That's this switch, flat switch, no moving parts. Um, so they add very nicely right on top of those. And again, just like the Lex, pushing it will activate. Act, um, 
matching the picture cue. So here I have the little fan, so just touching that, it's going to make it go. So we're making that association. I have my play card. Pushing that play card will make it go. So that's another way you can add function to it. Um, this pal pad could be plugged into a communication device. Um, the sequencer, the randomizer, the medley, all of those, if you need more information, go to our website. So that's easily used just like any other switch. Then this is a newer one. This uses RFID technology. It has, this is called the Prox Pad. So again, it knows instead of just a picture card, it has a tag. And you can't tell there, but it's a little bit thicker than the card, and it always has a number on the back. So it's programmed, and once it's programmed, the, the ProxPad knows. Go to class. Follow your schedule. I can do it with the, just the Go picture. Go to class. Follow your schedule. Again, if you're someone who they're not at that level, I can put that tag on the back. Go to class. Follow your schedule. It has a proximity mode where I just have to get close. Go to class. And it also has Follow a touch mode so that I have to touch. Go to class. Follow your schedule. So again, that object picture matching. Go to class. Easily Follow done. Follow your schedule. You can re-record the cards as many times as you want. But um, once it's recorded, it will stay that way no matter uh, until you re-record. So it it is always ready for you, Go which is really class. nice because you Follow don't have to. Schedule. Whoops, you don't have to do a lot of re-recording. All right, now I'm going to show you how you can use these um, in a scanning mode. Again, we're always looking for ways to incorporate the visuals that the kids need at the earliest level. So at this, you can start teaching scanning at that object level. So what we have here, I have two buttons going. Go. Oh, and I'm moving it. So you see the light came on. More. This is an auditory keyword scanning. No, nothing. Oh, so then. Neither choice. Neither choice, it said. So I can move Go. through. I can teach that scanning through objects, which is really important for our single switch users. More. Let's do more. Let's do more. So again, just an example of a real functional activity you can use. One other thing I wanted to show you, we do have blank cards with some pre-drilled holes in them because we know that the, the tangibles we have aren't don't meet everybody's needs. And so if you want to personalize and add some specific objects, you can keep it in that same format by attaching those to the blank cards just for continuity for a child who's um, learning a system. It helps keep it well organized and just consistent, which is very important. If you have more questions about tangible object cards, you can go to our website. You can give us a call. We hope this was helpful. Thanks.